okay this is a continuation of the video that is lesson number 20 i did last time and this is lesson number 21 so lesson 21 is the is the same thing rational equation that means all you're supposed to write is write and solve a more rational equation so let's go directly to the problems practice problem one so here is a rational equation shown so how do we solve this for so for what values of this is this two equation x minus one and this it means maybe the graph is maybe something like this or something like this and and the, there's a line which crosses maybe this is the line x y equals x minus one and we need to solve for x so we are not interested in graphing and just solving let's see the only thing we need to be very careful here the denominator is x plus two and remember denominator cannot be zero if you subtract to both sides you get x equals minus two and that is the vertical vertic vertical asymptote basically means uh, you we cannot take the value of x cannot be equal to minus this is be, beyond the domain of the function here on the right side so because the moment you put x equals minus two this whole thing will become divided by zero and which is wrong you, you don't need that now how do we solve this so the best is get away with the denominator watch this x plus 2 is in the denominator so what i will do is i will multiply both the side by x plus 2 this side and and x plus 2 on the so this is multiplication so both i'm trying to save my paper so this x plus 2 crosses out it's the same thing up and down but the left side is x plus 2 Okay, and we can use the distributive property to the left side or you can use the box method like this where you put x and 2 and x and minus 1 so this become x square and x into minus will be this then x into x is 2x and this will be minus 2 so basically you get x square and this together is plus 2 and minus 1 is plus x so this will be plus x and there's a minus 2 and everything you bring it to the left side that means you subtract x square both sides so if you subtract x square both sides you end up getting x minus 2 equals minus 4x plus 3 then then add 4x both sides right? so that all the variables are on the left side so this is what you get this crosses out and then add two of both sides. You get five x equals five divided by five, and x is one, and you are done. That's that's all it is. The question was solve for x. So what is x? So x has to be one. And, and the question is, how do we know this is the correct answer? And you can plug in this x right here. 1 minus 1 the left will become 0 and if i plug in the this side x x so this will be 1 square minus 4 times 1 plus 3 upon 1 plus 2 and that will be uh, 1 minus 4 plus 3 divided by 3 and this will be 0 over 3 is 0 and that is correct so that means the left is 0 and the right is 0 so the answer is correct here Sometimes you may get answer two answers. One is x equals one and x equals minus two. But we cannot take x equals minus two because uh, I can see that x minus two is undefined. That means the fun the equation is undefined. There is no output for x equals minus two, and that problem is done. Well, let's do question number two. Question number two. Uh, first, let me write it neatly. Four over four minus x. And I like equal. So we have two different denominators, the left and the right. See, so this is 4 minus x, and this is 4 plus x. So on both the side, we will write the multiply the least common multiplier. So what is the least common multiplier? It means you multiply 4 minus x, and you also multiply 4 plus x, both sides. So 4 minus x and 4 plus. X. What is the reason to write this? Is because we can get away with the fraction in the denominator so that means this 4 minus x and this 4 minus crosses out this 4 plus 4 
goes away and you what have you left is 4 into 4 plus x and on the right you get this 5 and 4 minus x and then use the distributive property 4 times 4 is 16 and 4 times x is 4x 5 times 4 is 20 and 5 times minus 5x and get the variables on the left side so the smaller one is minus 5 so I'll add negative 5x both sides uh, sorry add positive 5x so this crosses out and you get 16 plus 9x equals 20 and you subtract 16 both side and you get 9x equals 4 divided by 9 and you get x equals 4 by 9. Like, uh, pro uh, problem 3 is what they say is you are given a rational equation and you just want to know whether this whether the, you get this answer and we all we need to do is how do we do this and you can see that here the denominator is 60 and here there is the x and this. so we have to multiply all these three things so let's do that equals 2x plus 50 and then this is the what is given all you do is multiply both sides by the x so this is x then x plus 50 and also the 60 so again this side will be x and then x plus 50 and then 60 now why we do this so that we can cross out this this x will cross out with this x this x plus 50 will go away this 60 will go away and say so no more denominators so what all are you left with x plus 50 on the left and on the right it is 2x plus 50 and then this 60 which is right here and use the distributive property x times x is x squared x times 50 is 50x then 60 times 2x will be 120x and 60 times this will 5 6 is a 30 but because there are 2 they will become 3000 then all you do is because they want us to have the the right side to be 0 so you have to subtract 120x here uh, and you can do one step at a time so you see so you do this so this goes away and you're left with x squared minus 70x you can check that and that is 3000 now you subtract 3000 both side so subtracting 3000 both side so this go away and you get zero and you can see this expression that you left with is the same thing as that and you're done i hope that makes sense let's do question number four okay question number four says kiran jogs at a speed of six miles per hour when there is that when there are no hills that means on a plain area on the plain road suppose this is the plain road so kiran uh, walks on this and his speed is six miles so what this means is and they also gives let's see this this stretch is like suppose this stretch was eight miles so he's jogging eight miles here the distance this is the distance and he's jogging with some speed and there is uh, six miles per hour that means the time it will take here is for him to reach from the start and he wants to end so the time is always the distance over speed and and because distance travel when you drive a car is always speed time the time so with this and this is the same thing so we're going to use this uh, formula now in this case because the road is just without when there's no hill it's just a flat land a flat road so no no steepness nothing so that means the time it takes for him to uh, reach the destination uh, covering eight miles would be the distance is eight and the speed is six so six and if you see this is same as four divided so four over three and which will be one one third of an hour so 
but the question is ask me which uh, but the question is he plans to jog up the mountain road which cause his speed to decrease by r miles per hour so what this means is what this means is it depends on the how steep is the road so i'll draw some roads so this will be one road maybe another is something like this maybe another one is something like this maybe another one is some so depending on the steepness uh, when he walks this stretch of 10 miles sorry 8 miles this is 8 miles this is 8 miles like something like this so the, from the start to end he, then because of the steepness so his speed is going down by some uh, r so they gave you r uh, r miles per hour so this is it gets lower that means if this is now there's more steepness here so i'm starting here so, so there will be whatever the speed was in the beginning six here maybe he's going by his he, if for this road his speed is getting reduced by one mile per hour so i can just put one mile one six minus one if he goes here maybe this is going by 2.5 so i'll write 2.5 miles per hour so his speed is when this is too high so maybe speed is decreasing by four miles per hour and so on so basically the the formula that means time it takes to reach the final destiny will be will be the distance that he has to cover to the speed that he goes so that means this becomes which is the t i can write t and t is a function of the the how much the speed gets reduced to so this become distance is eight miles that's how they gave us he has to jog eight miles and then divide by the speed now the speed is getting reduced six minus one six minus two and so on so you just have to subtract the r and this is the expression that helps to understand to understand the uh, time it takes uh, when the for when the when your speed of the jogging is getting reduced by so what does this uh, graph looks like that is what important is when you draw the x-axis and the y-axis uh, this means there is you can't have r equals can r be equal to six now what will happen if r equal to six that means he is jogging at six miles per hour and his his speed is getting reduced by uh, six miles that means six minus six itself will be zero so this becomes six minus six is zero and you can't have that's that's impossible so we can say okay at six it is undefined you, your your speed cannot be reduced by six miles per hour so so at the most till here and th there is that vertical asymptote your vertical asymptote uh, at x equal at r equals let's see if i call this x axis is r and this is t the de dependent variable is time and the independent variable is the how much the speed is getting reduced that is r so this is how the graph will look like and if r equals zero that means uh, if if nothing at speed is zero that means it is it is eight over six minus r that means he's traveling on the flat surface that is eight over six and this is one point one one third uh, one two thirds sorry one two thirds so that means this is like one and this is like two and maybe the maybe it crosses this part so i can say this is like a one two third and then the graph see it goes this is how the graph will look like if you try to graph and see this part and on the right side even though it is not defined but on our regular desmos this is how the graph of the function will look like now which function is this one that is t equals so t equals t equals 8 over 6 minus r or on your calculator you can put y is 8 over 6 minus x so one thing is that x here r equals 6 is the vertical asymptote and you can see also the end behavior also as r if you go on increasing the reduce the speed to very very large large positive number 
and you can see the whole time the time will be almost like will be zero because when the denominator this becomes denominator become very large number this whole thing will become almost very large negative number but everything will collapse to negative zero type so almost zero coming closer to here the under takeaway here is the main thing is if if there is if the if the speed does not get reduced by anything then he will the time that will take is one to third and every time it goes on decreasing let's see let's take simple example here is what i'll take the main number maybe four maybe two so if i take if the speed r is is it is reduced by 2 miles per hour this will be 8 over 6 minus 2 that is 8 over 4 and it is 2 that make, that means if this is 2 then the answer becomes 2 here it is if it is 4 if i put this as 4 this will be 4 4 but 6 minus 4 is 2 and that becomes 4 so that will be if this is 2 3 4 that means if this is 4 then this is the point which is 4 goes to 2 this is 2 goes to 4. That's all that meaning of. And I hope I'm making sense this. How to, we will see later classes how to sketch this graph. So here there is a, a not only that it has a vertical asymptote, it has also horizontal asymptote. The graph approaches to the x axis. See this approaches to x axis. You can see this pink color graph is almost approaches to 6. So if we. If you try to graph this, so here I put maybe I want to write t equals maybe and here put an r variable because we use that. So that's how it is. This is r. r is how much the speed gets reduced to. So, so that's the equation and I put r equals or instead of r, r just to avoid confusion, I'll put this as x and that one is y because that makes it easy and here I'll put x equals 6 because you can't have a six. look at this and I'll make it like a dotted line just to understand and bring this to the left side see here is the graph so this is what I was talking about that when there is the speed does not get reduced then it will take 1 to 3rd which is 1.33 time the time will be those many hours and then as the still as the as it, and you can even put a maybe see if you can put one and then two and three and four and five like this and you can see as the time increases like this and here i'll put zero also i think i missed that and get a zero there put a one here so so these are the point as the as the speed get reduced the time it takes to to complete the jogging will be more and more so that's all it means like so it goes to 1.3 1.62 2.64 8 and then goes on increasing i can even put 5.5 and even though i can't see i have to do like this and there it is so more time will be required so i hope i made sense uh, the question number five is similar to the one we did before so somehow we want to get make it look like this so all you do is you write this as divide x to x and also divide to the other one and there you go you get equals to 1 plus 10 over x and if you compare this to this you can see clearly the c the c is 1 so the c the red c here the number is that's the one and uh, and the r that you see is 10 this is the r so your c is 1 and r is 10 and that's all you're supposed to write. So this C is also means it means when you try to divide this by if I do this x plus 10 and divide this x goes one time x, okay. And if you subtract get one, so that means when you divide this, your quotient is one, that's the one, and the remainder is one. So, so sorry, drop down this. This is zero, and we've got drop down 10. So 10 is the remainder. So what is the takeaway here is also what is the vertical asymptote here so understanding the meaning of vertical asymptote means you can't have x in the denominator see 
So that's why we say vertical asymptote is x equals to 0, and that is the y-axis. And then what is the question is, what is the horizontal asymptote? And the next is, what is the horizontal asymptote for that part is, is if you look at this equation, of course, you, by looking at this, you know the degree in the numerator is 1, the degree in the denominator is 1. So it is like 1x plus 10 over 1x. So both degrees are 1, 1. So the, so the horizontal asymptote is all y equals p over q, and p is the coefficient of the leading term in the numerator, which is 1. So that is 1, and the q is the coefficient of the leading term in the denominator 1, so y is 1. So in other words, uh, this is a robotic way to get the answer, but if you see, how do we get it from this equation? Look at this. When I make the x a very large positive number, see this, if this x, so in this expression, if you make x a very large positive number, very large, large number, this 10 over x will almost eventually will become 0. And I'm saying plus, raised to plus means a, a, a very, 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 very small positive number. That means this whole thing, gx, the output will almost become the 1. And that's why we said gx is y. So that means y is 1, and that's the horizontal asymptote. And if you want to see how the graph looks like here, so that means that means there is a horizontal asymptote. Vertical as, uh, asymptote is the y-axis, which is x equals to 0. This is y-axis, but it has an equation x equals to 0. And it has also horizontal asymptote, which is y equals 1, and y equals 1 is this one. Huh? So this is y equals 1. So how the graph will look like now? We need to sketch the graph. I'll use the black color. <laughs> so if it's this, so that means if I put the top part, you want to know when is the when is the numerator, you want to know x intercept, when is this whole thing will become 0. You can see x plus 10 equals to 0. That means you have to subtract 10 and get x equals minus 10. That means at minus 10, maybe here. So the graph is something like this. This will be the sketch of the graph, and here the sketch will be like this. So this will be the uh, rational graph of the rational function because it crosses as minus 10, comma 0. And on the right side, you can say this goes to plus infinity because when you when you make x approach very closer to 0, the origin from the right side, this side, and you can see, you can see here. So this will be, become a very large number when x is a very, very small number, like a million, 0 0.00000. This whole thing will become very, 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 very large. So that side, the graph goes to plus infinity, you see. And the same thing on the left side, if we approach, to zero from from the left side, the 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 output becomes very very large negative number, which is minus infinity. So even though this question was not asked to us, but in the unit three you're going to do this. So I'm in advance trying to show how the how to graph this type of expression. So the one that is given is x plus ten over x, and this is how you graph this. So just knowing the vertical intercept, horizontal intercept intercept and also where it crosses the now it does not cross the y-axis because the denominator is uh, x there so that because the denominator is x so x equals zero itself is the so the denominator so that is not possible there it does not cross the y-axis so Question six is yet another more practice problem. So all you do is this is like y, and all you do is multiply seven x plus x on the right side, and also multiply seven plus x on the left side, so that we can cross out this seven x. See, so what I left is on the left side is ten seven plus x. And on the right one plus 7x. 
So use the distributive property at 70 plus 10x, 1 plus 7x. Then subtract 7x from right and you subtract 7x and drop down 70. This will be 3x. This crosses out, you get 1 and subtract 70 both sides. So that way this goes away, I get 3x equals minus 69 there and divide by 3 and you get minus 223 and you're done. The same thing you do the second problem. Uh, this time you have the denominator as uh, 12 plus x. So, all. so you kind of multiply 12 plus x this side and you also multiply 12 plus x so that this thing will cross out and what I left is 0 0.2 then 12 plus x on the right side is 6 plus 2 and use the distributive property if we multiply 0 0.2 times 12 you will get, I think it is 2.4, you can confirm, I'm writing directly, and that is 6 plus 2x, and I'm going to subtract this because 0.2x is a smaller one, and then this will become 24, 6, and if you take away 0.2, this you will get 1.8x, and then you subtract 6, you get 18 equals 1.8x and that is divided by 1.8 and you get x equals uh, we can multiply by 10 10 so that you want to get away with the with the decimal in the one so it become 180 over 18 and you can clearly see the answer is 10. Now this is the question number C I want you to do it yourself do it yourself They're exactly the same how I did and this is the last question. A softball player has had eight base hits out of 25. So this was the base hits got, which is the success he got. And out of 25 for a current batting average of, so the average is always eight out of 25. So you just take the ratio and you get. But then he, the student is not happy. So how many he wants to improve this to, to get an average of 0 0.400. That means uh, 8 over 25, he needs to have continuous hits. So he needs to have a consecutive means continuous hits. And we don't know, uh, and, and that means uh, he's going to uh, go, go and bet number of times. That let's say he goes to bet X number of times, and he gets all of them uh, like success. So you have to add X, X. And this average has to be 0. 0 0.400 okay and all you do is so the question is how many consecutive base hit does she needs if she wants to raise her batting average so that means he in order to have this as that she needs to have 8 plus x uh, uh, hits out of 25 plus x and you can easily also multiply 25x both sides even to solve this so you multiply 25 plus x. So this will go away, you get 8 plus x equals, and this is almost like a 0.4, just to avoid too much, too much uh, or you can, if you use the distributive property, 0.4 times 25 will be 2.200, that will be 10. You can see if we multiply 25, this is as good as writing 0 0.4 so 0 0.44 and 4 times 25 is 100 and after the decimal one digit go back you get here 10 so it will be 10 plus 0 0.4 x and then you subtract 0 0.4 x this side so this goes away and you get i think it is 0 0.6 x which is 10 and subtract 8 So get 0 0.6x equals 2 and divide by 0 0.6 and you can multiply 10, 10 and you get so this 0.6 crosses out and you get x equals 20 over 6 
and that is x equals 3 i think you can check 2 thirds that means almost we can't have a fraction of a batting it has to be four bats so four consecutive so he needs to have four consecutive that means it should be when you put four and four that will be really give you say eight plus four is twelve and twenty five plus four is twenty nine and this will be a number which will be almost equal to zero point four average so this completes uh, lesson number 21. Make sure you write all the steps and show.